What is going on guys? We are back playing some more surviving with RF tools. And today guys, we are going to be messing around with power cells, which I know really aren't the most exciting blocks, but they are extremely useful. Now they're especially useful for us because if you remember last episode, we set up energetic generators. Those are right down here. Now I haven't been running them anymore, mainly because I don't have a huge surplus of ender pearls. Going to talk about that in a bit, but uh, if you guys remember, or if you don't know, uh, the energetic generators cap out at 5 million RF total. And then if they burn through fuel, they will just keep going. They do not stop unless you manually stop them or take the fuel out. So we need to put the power somewhere. And the reason I didn't go over stuff last episode uh, when we actually set these up is most people are going to use Ender IO conduits or something of the sort in a mod pack. But if you guys want to be cool and you want to play alongside me or you want to stick to just one mod with your build, then there is a way to do it pretty easily with RF tools and wireless power transportation. So... The reason that we're going to be going over this today in a pretty short episode is because it is very similar to storage here. The modular storage systems um, that we've hooked up with cards before, it's almost identical, if not identical. But people seem to run into a lot of issues with that. So we're going to go over it today. Um, I know it's going to be a really quick video, and then the next video is going to be much longer. And I'll explain why a little bit later. But we are going to sleep because it's nighttime out, not that we really have to go outside. And then we're going to get crafting. So. We've messed with a power cell before. We have this one right here, which is the simple power cell. Now it's not very expensive, but it only holds an internal storage of 250,000 RF. We're gonna do the regular power cell today, which is 1 million RF per block. And you can hook multiple of these up. I think we're gonna hook five up today. Um, so nothing crazy. Eventually we'll get to the advanced one, which is going to be 4 million. Uh, that's really the goal. But for now we can make these and upgrade them later. So. The first thing to craft is going to be the machine frames. We're going to be making six of these. So there we go. Toss those back in there. Then we are going to be going and making, I believe, 24 blocks of redstone. So I uh, was not sure if we'd have enough for that. So we do. Running a little bit low on that. Um, and then some weird things that we have to use. Uh, emeralds, diamonds, and prismarine shards. So... Uh, the main thing that I had to do was go and find an ocean monument. So I've never done that before. Um, I think the last time I messed around with the prismarine shards, I was able to make them with actually additions with um, one of the uh, setups in there and turn a block into them. So never had to do that before. But so what I went and did is uh, there's a village nearby and I went and I traded with the cartographer and you guess you trade with him four times and he goes from doing, I want to say it's, what was it? So like paper for an emerald and then a compass for some emeralds and then emeralds for a map and then emeralds and a compass for an ocean explorer map. And so if you take this, you open it up and you can see an ocean monument in relation to us down in the bottom right corner. Now, I guess this came out with the sort of like exploration update. It was at 1.11. Uh, never done anything with it before though, so uh, did this today, ended up having to watch some videos on how to do it, and we went out to that ocean monument and I got some stuff that we needed. Um, kind of a pain in the butt because if we take a look at the map, oh, we have to go outside, okay. So if we come out here and we take a look at the map, no, why are we still considered inside? What? Okay, I don't know how to... Why are we inside in this map? Okay, you guys are probably cringing right now because I probably hit a button here. What? Do we need to switch it to a different chunk layer? It thinks we're... What? Okay, I have no idea why it's not loading in. Oh. Okay, there we go. It was on cave layers. Okay, don't cringe at me. I don't use journey maps, okay? Um, but this is the path that I followed to get there. So we went all the way over through here. Didn't really know what was going on. And then I realized I just had to one and run in one direction, ran through here. We hit another village, kept going, and then finally made it to the ocean. And by the time we made it to the ocean, it actually wasn't very far out. The problem was there really aren't any oceans near us here. So that was the closest one we could get. Um, but yeah, that's just a quick heads up in case you're in a world and you don't have those. 
uh, and you need to get them because you do need them for this. Uh, so yeah, slightly unfortunate. And then when we end up upgrading, we need infused diamonds, which honestly I would have preferred to the prismarine shards. Then we need some emeralds and some diamonds, which are not a big issue at all. So we're gonna craft the power cells. So we're gonna make six of them. Um, I think we're only gonna use five, but I wanna make six. I know where we're gonna use five of them. I wanna make six though, just in case we wanna slap one down somewhere else. Um, then what we need to make, the last thing, are these uh, power cards, the power cell cards, which can connect a power cell multi-block. So uh, to make these really, really simple, just some paper, gold nuggets, and redstone. So I think we need a little bit more paper, throw this in here, and then we need to make six of these. So there we go, we got all six of those. So we grab out the power cells, we grab out the power cell cards, and then you're gonna wanna have a wrench with these uh, if you're planning on changing what individual sides do, um, but we can cover that. So what we're gonna do is head downstairs and throw these down on top of each of these generators. So we're gonna put one there, one there, one there, and unfortunately we gotta break the torch and put one there, and then we'll just throw the torch down right there. Okay, so throw them down, they actually look pretty cool, and we want all of these to have power going in. So you can set all sides to in, which is blue, by clicking this button here. Now we can change individual sides by just using a wrench if we wanted to, but I'm gonna set the bottom side to that actually, and just get rid of all these other sides just because I think it looks better. So we're gonna do that, and then here, I don't know if there's any way to change the side if we just set all of them to in. I don't know if there's any way to do it where we change the bottom side without removing the endergenic generator, which I really don't want to do. So for visual effects, we are going to do this. Um, but yeah, you don't really need to. And then, yeah, we can't even get to that one because we got the hopper there. You know what? I'm doing it. We're breaking it. It needs to look nice. That's, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. You play Minecraft to make things look nice. And then we'll just pretend like the one on the other side of this wall isn't bothering us immensely because we can't change it. Okay, so there we go. These guys are all set, and we're gonna wanna pick a main one. And that is gonna make sense in a second, but let's pick this one, because this one's by the hopper. It's the first one to go. So what we do, and you can see that these already have the power going into them, um, and the buffer is on each one at one million. So what we can do is take the power cell card, and we put it up here in the upper left-hand slot. Now, if we're looking at what the slots are, this one is the power cell card slot, this one is the charging slot, and this one is a linking slot. So what we do is we put a power cell card up here, and then we're gonna take another power cell card and put it down here. And so when we pull this out, it gets sent to link ID one. And this one also gets set to link ID one. So you do need to put one in there so that you have two, so that they actually are linked together. But then what you're gonna do is you're gonna leave this top left one in there. If you take it out, um, you can reset the cards, but if you start taking them out and putting them in other places, they're going to lose their link ID. So the only place that we can now put this card, if we wanted to keep link ID one, is up in the upper left-hand corner here. I'll show you something that if you do, if you shift click it in, it puts it in here and then it unlinks it because there's no card up here. So just something to keep in mind is we're gonna put it up in the left-hand corner when we get it and you cannot shift click it in. So just remember that. Now though, you can see that they are both linked together. So the internal buffer of this multi-block is two million. Now the reason that the wording of multi-block is a little bit confusing is because most multi-block structures are ones that you build adjacent to each other. Now these can be adjacent to each other and can transfer you know, from side to side if you have the inputs and outputs correctly, but they will only share the internal buffer like they're linked together with the cards if you actually link them with cards. So if you put them next to each other, you you know don't need to link them with cards, but, um, but yeah, they won't have the same internal buffer where you can visually see it. Uh, so what we're gonna do is then we can use this one and still do the same link ID. So we can shift click all of these in here and then pull them out. So it doesn't even need to be the main one, you just start with one as the main one. And then you just throw them in all these other ones. So now you can see it's got an internal buffer of four million. And the nice thing is that the game basically says that these are all evenly dispersed. So even at the very beginning, the, like there was different amounts of power in each one. Essentially, if you're curious about how much power each one has, at any given time, you're gonna take this number and divide it by four in our case. So not that that's super relevant, but the guess just how the game determines it. 
Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that these do have a little bit of a cost to transport energy wirelessly. I think the highest it can get is 10% of the energy sent, and that's over a very long distance. Um, they can go between dimensions as far as I know too, um, hence the fact that they work with RF tools. Um, but the big thing to keep in mind is you can infuse these also to reduce that cost drastically. So you can do that, but you probably wouldn't want to infuse them until you get to the advanced ones. Um, but yeah, so now all the power should be pulled out of the system. So what we can do now is come upstairs. And the big thing I want to hook it up to is getting rid of this back here and then throwing down our own. Now, the big thing I'm curious about is if I put a power cell up here, change them all to output uh, and then change let's say this side to input and then wrench it. Is it going to remember that? It will. Okay, so you can place them down, configure the sides if you're gonna be putting it in an awkward spot and then uh, wrench it and place it back down. So now the nice thing is that we can throw in the linking card here. It is connected again and all the power is going here to our quarry, which we are going to actually be able to start running um, so if we go and throw some ender pearls in down here now that we can use up the power This system will be able to function. We'll start getting a little bit more power up here and The the quarry actually burns through power fairly fast now. It gets us a lot of loot um, Which is really nice. You can see it's you know, it's not even going very fast um, It's going through the different Y levels So we're gonna be getting pretty lame stuff right now, but it absolutely chugs through power here um, so it's burning through power faster than I think you can even input it. And if we look at this, it's, is it inserting into this? It should be, huh? Set all the sides to send energy. Oh, so it, it was burning through energy faster than this could, what? Okay, that's a little wonky. So it's burning through energy just about as fast as the system can make it, if not faster. Wow, okay, well that's interesting. Uh, didn't see that coming. But what we can also do is then this setup over here is uh, also a little bit wonky. It's how we keep this whole system going. And the whole premise behind it is it's gonna burn the coal we have in this setup. So what we can also do here is uh, you know, just wrench this stuff out. Give me this and give me this and then we're just gonna put down a power cell Change them all to out and then put in the power cell. No messed it up I did what I said not to do so we can link it over here again It's the nice thing about having a bunch of them around But then we can link it over here and you can see we get our speed increase again So now we don't need to worry about a lot of these things being hooked up We can just keep it going and these are starting to fill up again uh, we only have three ender pearls left, so there should be no issue with these going over. But yeah, that's really nice because now anytime we need power, we can hook up anything in our base to these and just put them on channel one, and that's good. And then also, if we wanted other channels for you know individual things like you know the tree setup over there, then we could do that. And you can have you know multiple different channels for multiple different things, the main channels, uh, using them on servers. It's all really really nice. So. I know that was a pretty simple video, uh, nothing too complicated. I mentioned that in the next video, it was gonna be a long one, and that is because we're going to be using the spawner um, to spawn Endermen to get us Ender Pearls, and I wanna mess around with it. I know it's not the most efficient way to do it, um, but we're gonna mess around with that, and that is going to take a while, which is why I'm kind of procrastinating by making this video today. It's, you know, when I'm recording this, it's Friday after work, uh, so you know, it's been a, uh, pretty long week. I had off on the 4th of July, but um, didn't get Friday off. So it's been a long week. I've been busy. Um, brain is kind of fried at this point. So I thought, you know what, maybe I'll try and record that video tomorrow when I'm a little bit rejuvenated. It's the weekend or something, and then I can put it up. Um, I've also been trying not to record for a little bit because as you can hear um, in, in the mic, it's a little bit echoey in here. And I apologize for that. But that is because uh, I'm in my new apartment with uh, my fiance Lacey and uh, our two cats. We actually rescued another cat that was abandoned. So they are both asleep behind me right now. We have our Mancoon and then just a tabby house cat. Um, yeah, their names are Percy, which is short for Persephone and Sage because she's got these really beautiful green eyes. 
Um, yet both girls, and they're both about Percy's about seven months old now. Uh, Mancoon and Sage, I think we were told, is approximately one and a half years old. Um, but she was abandoned by her owner, so we don't know. Um, but yeah, so we've been taking care of a lot of stuff. Um, I think I've been working for about six weeks now. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of a life update. Trying to kind of fill this room up. We have a, a big uh, rug in here that covers almost the entire room. Um, you know, things on the walls. But until I get, you know, more of like some pillows and like a sofa in here or something... Um, it's like our gaming room, which has both our L desks and computers and stuff, then it's going to be a little bit echoey. So, um, but yeah, I want to tell you guys know all that at the end. I know a lot of people don't really care about that, um, but some of you guys do. So that's kind of an update on what's been going on with me. Um, I know I had this sort of, you know, amazing idea that I would move into my new apartment and boom, videos would be coming out, but work kind of kicked my butt a little bit. Getting into the routine of working eight to five when I have a one hour drive in and a one hour drive home and then trying to go to the gym for an hour every day, right there, that is, you know, nine, 10, 11, 11 hours, 12 hours of my day taken up just doing things that like I, I have to prioritize. Um, and then, you know, you try and sleep for eight hours, then boom, you have four hours left of your day to take care of stuff around the house, eat, um, you know, spend time with you know, people, and then try and also record videos. So it was a little rough. I apologize for that. I know a lot of you guys have been wondering where I am, but I'm going to try and get a better schedule of recording videos over the weekends so I can put them up during the week. So I will keep you guys posted on that. I try and update you on Twitter as much as I can. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for putting up with me and all this and being supportive. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and found it informative. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments and I will get back to you. And thanks for watching, guys. I will talk to you later.